The Thieves' Guild has planned another merchant robbery. In the lawless hills far from the city, they have grown brazen in their approach. Decrepit wagons of unfortunate travelers litter these hills as a warning. However, this time the Emperor has sent a legion of his best warriors instead of the planned merchant convoy. Craft layer. I am the crafter. This is the layer. Today we are completing part three of my three-part roads and accessories build. It's going to be some hills, a broken down wagon on one of those hills, as well as a completed wagon. I've 3D modeled and 3D printed all the pieces to assemble this, so you can check out the link to download those yourselves and print them out at home just down in the description. Be sure to like and subscribe. I'm going to be giving away STL files as often as possible, putting up build videos as often as possible. So stick around, hit that notification bell, be alerted every time I post some new stuff. Starting off with the 3D model that we'll be printing today, I crafted this in Cinema 4D and Marvelous Designer for the fabric. It's a multi-piece wagon that you print out and assemble yourself. A few of the parts are delicate. I also created a broken down alternate of this, and essentially that's just slices of this wagon. Um, it uses less resin to print, for instance, but it's essentially the same thing. You could achieve the same effect by printing this whole wagon and just snipping off pieces to make it look broken. Okay, so just putting all the pieces together here, making sure I have everything accounted for. You can see the broken wagon over on the right and the completed wagon on the left. I am starting with the completed wagon and just using a bit of baking soda as an accelerant for the super glue. Applying all the pieces here, I have the tongue on the front. I do not have like a yoke for horses or anything that might come at a later time, but for now, there isn't that. I'm also creating some bases for the broken down wagon. Because I am a masochist, I decided to create some hills at the last minute. So just taking some foam core and slicing those out into some organic shapes and beveling the edges of those down. Taking some scrap XPS foam here and just fitting this to the hills. I don't want this to be anything too large. These aren't going to be multi-stepped hills for the most part, but I do want them to remain relatively flat so minis can sit on top of them. I'm using my Woodland Scenics hot foam cutter and just kind of sculpting that down and making the slopes as gradual as possible, as well as trimming off any overhangs. I used a Woodland Scenics rock mold to create some of these extra rocks. I prefer not to 3D print rocks as it just seems like a waste of resin. Here I am using some drywall compound to help shore up all the seams between the rocks and the XPS foam, doing my best not to get that drywall compound over the plastic rocks. A quick coat of black paint for all of these pieces to get them primed and ready for painting. And I started these with a black primer as well. Off camera I had done a coat of Mod Podge. I originally tried spray painting these white and didn't like it so I went back and that's when I primed them all black. I'm going through with my airbrush now and using some brown craft paint to get a good base on these as well as putting in some lighter tan colors to just kind of work those values up and try to get these looking a bit more natural. I have a guest airbrusher here doing a bit of some gray stone on the plaster rocks. always want to be sure to thoroughly clean your airbrush. Once that was done I used some Vallejo weathering pigments. This is some desert dust and I'm just putting that into the crevices as well as some of the brown dirt that they have and trying to make this look as natural as possible. I used some hairspray to fix the pigments and give everything a coat in PVA glue and apply my static brass mixture. I'm using some 7mm Woodland Scenic Static Brass mixed with some 4mm straw and some 4mm green. That was just a $25 static grass applicator I got on eBay. Now for the broken down wagon, I've assembled some of those pieces and I'm painting everything a coat of brown just as a base. A quick and dirty dry brush over everything. And 
And for this one, I wanted to treat this a little more delicately, so I decided to use my airbrush and brush in some lighter colors and things like that. I'm also going to be using some inks. For the canvas, I again just started working those values lighter and lighter. The airbrush really helped here. It helped get some seamless paint on there without any kind of like brush strokes or things like that. Now for the mountains and hills, I had applied some Vallejo pigments. It started looking a little almost like leopard print, but I applied some hairspray as well as some woodland scene tack. I go back and I add some more weathering pigments later on. For the wagon parts, I'm going through and painting all of the metal like a black cast iron, and I'll go through and dry brush those later. So here I am going back now with some more weathering pigments. I really didn't like how spotted these hills had turned out with some of the brown dust, but just adding a little more desert dust there kind of balanced it out. Going through on the top and painting all of that cast iron supports for the roof. For the wagon, I continued working on some of the metal for the roof piece and started assembling the base for the broken down wagon. So I'm just using some hot glue. I originally tried some Marlene's tacky glue. It just wasn't drying fast enough and wasn't strong enough, so I decided to go with the hot glue. And I'm just taking these pieces and trying to map them out for what would be realistic for this broken down carriage and how it might kind of erode over time. Here I'm using some coarse flock by Woodland Scenics, mixing in a bit of brown paint, jet dry finishing, uh, that's like dishwasher finishing liquid that helps work as a flow aid, uh, and a little bit of P watered down PVA glue, and that kind of dyes this bright green coarse turf a little bit lighter. I also sprinkled in some of the untreated coarse turf as well, so there's some variance in the foliage colors. Going through adding more Vallejo pigments and weathering dust. Now that the canvas rooftop had gotten to a place I liked, I wanted to have some like green almost mold, so I used my airbrush to go in around some of where those folds would be and airbrush in some kind of like green mildewy fabric. I decided to go through with my airbrush and add some ink to some of this, as well as use my brush to add some green ink in places where there might have been some mold and things. Again, another coat of some isopropyl alcohol and some spray tack to help stiffen everything up and keep everything affixed in one place. As well as a coat of varnish here. To finish up, I like to put a base on these, so this is some black construction paper. I'm using rubber cement, and you let that dry on both sides, and once you stick those together, it forms a very permanent bond. You just have to go around it with an X-Acto knife at that point, and you'll have a very clean, professional base. So that about wraps this video up. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you print this out. I love how this stuff turned out, and this has really put the capstone on my three-part roads and accessories build. So I hope you guys print this out at home and give it a shot. I know I'm going to be getting a lot of use out of this in my games. I can't wait to put it down in front of my players. As always, I'm going to be giving away videos as often as possible, giving away STL files as often as possible. So be sure to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you see new videos. I am The Crafter, this is The Layer, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.